The first series of The Animals of Farthing Wood was based on the Colin Dan book, also called The Animals of Farthing Wood. The Animals' Journey from Farthing Wood to White Deer Park. Like all three series, it had 13 episodes of roughly 20 minutes each. I'll talk about each of the characters once I've covered the plot of the first series. But first, I'll list off all of the main characters by name. The leader, Fox. The second-in-command, Badger. Mole. Adder. Owl. Kestrel. Weasel. Toad. And then various families of animals. The hares, the rabbits, the squirrels, the voles, the shrews, the field mice, the hedgehogs, the pheasants, and the newts. And finally, two animals that joined the group during the journey. Vixen and Whistler. It has to be said, they weren't very imaginative with the names of the characters, with almost all of them just being the name of their species. But whatever. Plot. So our first episode is called The Wood in Danger. Toad is making his way back to Farthing Wood after a long journey. Meanwhile, Badger, Weasel and Fox watch as their home of Farthing Wood is destroyed by humans, presumably to make way for buildings. This is something I always thought was a bit odd. The humans are destroying the wood with the animals still living in it. Anyway, Fox calls a meeting for all of the animals to decide what they are going to do. Shortly after the meeting starts, however, Toad reappears, having been away for several months and presumed dead by the other animals. They don't really explain where Toad has been, aside from him being shown in a fishbowl in someone's bedroom. But he does mention a nature preserve he came across on his way back, called White Deer Park. Fox proposes that they travel there as a group. But one of the hares questions the idea of them travelling together when many of them are natural enemies. It's here that we have one of the most crucial moments in the show, as Badger has everyone take the Oath of Mutual Protection, which states that they not eat other members of the group during the journey. Fox is chosen as the group's leader, although he doesn't seem very happy about this. They begin the journey in the second episode, appropriately titled The Journey Begins. Mole gets left behind because he overhears Adder insulting him, but Badger goes back for him, which begins probably the strongest friendship in the series. With the newts near death due to a lack of water, Al is able to locate a swimming pool and they briefly stop for a drink, but are forced to flee when the family who own the pool wake up. They are then forced to cross a narrow road into what is, unknown to them, an army base. Toad is so tired, however, that he stops partway across. Fox is able to rescue him, and the group stop in the army base to sleep, ending the episode. In the third episode, called Through Fire and Through Water, the group are woken by sounds of explosions. Soldiers start shooting around them, but run away when Weasel sets loose a swarm of wasps. They move on and stop for another drink by a small pond. The newts decide they should stay, as they feel the journey is too challenging for them. Meanwhile, Mole goes digging for worms, and Pheasant's tail is ruined when a bullet explodes near him. Suddenly, a fire breaks out across the forest area of the army land. With Toad and Mole missing, the animals escape, making it to a small island in the middle of a lake. Fox goes back for Toad, and he finds him tired and frightened in the middle of the flames. The fire spreads over the marsh of the army base, and it's implied that the newts have perished, but never confirmed. Maybe they were going for a bit of ambiguity here. A group of firefighters find Mole, and one of them puts him in his pocket. Later, Mole is able to escape, and Fox goes back for him to pick him up. Having escaped the fire, the animals move on. In episode 4, False Haven, the animals shelter from a rainstorm in the barn in the middle of a farm. Kestrel keeps watch in a nearby tree, and plans to have Pheasant relieve her, but he's too lazy, so his wife goes out to watch instead. Suddenly the farmer shows up. He kills Mrs. Pheasant, and locks the animals in the barn. Adder distracts the farmer's dog, while Owl suggests they dig their way out. A number of animals chew through the floor, and Mole tunnels his way out of the barn. They all escape, and Fox stays behind to stop the farmer's dog from following them. In one of the best scenes in the first series, Fox outwits the dog with clever talk, and joins the rest of the group at a corpse. The episode ends on a cliffhanger when Badger realises that Adder has been left behind. At the start of episode 5, called Snare for the Unwary, Pheasant volunteers to go back for Adder, as it will give him a chance to see his wife's final resting place. But it ends up costing him his life, as he's also shot by the farmer. I've got to say, having Pheasant die so soon after his first selfless act in going back for Adder did disappoint me, but I'll talk more about that when I talk about the characters. After hearing the gunshot, Fox sends Owl to get Adder, and the two share a rat at the farm, while a family of rooks sing to the animals back at the corpse. 
Owl and Adder return the next morning to find one of the baby rabbits trapped in a snare. Owl is able to save it by getting Mole to dig under the stump. I never quite understood the purpose of this bit. Next, the animals have to cross a river and make it across okay, but the rabbits begin to panic. Fox, Badger and a few other animals go back for them. The rabbits are rescued, but Fox and Badger are swept down river. The animals walk down river to see if they can see them, and the episode ends on a brilliant cliffhanger. In the sixth episode, Who Shall Wear the Crown, Badger is found tangled in a bunch of reeds. The other animals help to free him, and Kestrel spots Fox floating by on some driftwood. However, he mysteriously disappears when the driftwood passes under a bridge. Never really understood this bit. Is this some kind of magic bridge that makes animals disappear? Well, anyway, Badger takes charge of the group, and they continue without Fox. Later, Toad becomes unsure as to which way to go, and he starts taking them round in circles. Owl tells him that his homing instinct is taking him back to Farthing Wood. If only he had Satnav. Meanwhile, Mrs. Fieldmouse gives birth to babies, and it's revealed that Fox is alive and has been travelling in a small boat towards a town. In Episode 7, New Friends, Old Enemies, Vol says that they have found a home for the other smaller animals, and suggests that they stay where they are. They speak to Badger about this. Badger is reluctant to leave them behind, but concludes they can't possibly take the baby field mice with them. But they also can't wait for them to grow big enough to travel with them. This is a really interesting dilemma for Badger to be faced with so soon after becoming leader, especially after what happened to the newts. Badger agrees to leave them behind, but shortly after parting, they spot a shrike carrying a baby field mouse. Air returns to the smaller animals and finds that the baby field mice have been killed, which is probably the most horrifying part of the first series. The smaller animals rejoin the group. Meanwhile, Fox has escaped from the boat he was on and into the town. He meets a cat named Tom who agrees to give him food and shelter in exchange for Fox hunting for rats for him. The next morning, the box he is in is loaded onto a truck and taken to the countryside. He takes a rest in an empty earth, but later discovers it's the home of a vixen. She allows Fox to stay, and the two go for a hunt together. In the eighth episode, Friends in Need, Fox tells Vixen about his friends. He tells her he wants to find them, but he also doesn't want to leave her. Vixen says she'll consider going with him along the way, but doesn't feel she knows Fox well enough yet. A barn owl tells them he saw a small group of animals not long ago, including Badger. He shows them which way they went. They follow the animal's scent for a bit, but find a point where it divides. They split up, and Fox runs into the shrike that killed the baby field mice. He tells Fox where the animals went, and Fox realises he is on the right trail. Meanwhile, Vixen runs into a thrush feeding her babies. She asks her if she misses her freedom. The thrush says she's too busy to miss it. Vixen decides to head back to Fox, but gets picked up by a fox hunt. Meanwhile, the group have stopped at the top of a hill, and see the fox hunt pursuing Vixen. Fox reaches the hill, and tries to throw the hunt off by deliberately crossing Vixen's path. The hunt splits, and goes after both of them. Fox draws the hunt towards the hill, where Owl and Kestrel frighten them off. Fox is horrified to learn that the hunt has gone after Vixen. Vixen climbs the hill, and appears to be done for, but suddenly, Adder appears and bites the Huntmaster's horse. The hunt retreats, and Vixen tells Fox she'd be honoured to be his mate. Everyone cheers Adder's heroics, despite her insistence that it was some other snake. In the ninth episode, Whistler's Quarry, the animals come across a quarry. It is surrounded by a fence, so a mole tunnels underneath to enable the larger animals to enter. They drink and swim in a pond in the quarry, and also meet a heron called Whistler. So called because he has a hole in his wing, which creates a whistling sound when he flies. He catches some fish for the animals, and Toad tries to fish like him. Suddenly, he's caught by a carp, but Whistler is able to catch it and save Toad's life. He tells them he's been trying to catch that carp for years, but Toad asks him to throw it back, as he doesn't want to see it suffering. Whistler is shocked by this when he considers the fact that the carp tried to kill him, but complies anyway. Whistler decides to join the animals on their journey. Whistler and Vixen both take the oath. Shortly after this, the animals run into a pheasant shoot where one of the baby rabbits is killed. Like the snare scene, I never really understood the point of this. Episode 10 is called Between Two Evils. The animals find a motorway ahead of them, which Toad had not foreseen, as it was only being built when he crossed it on his way back. Some of the animals suggest they turn back, but find they can't, as the hunt is out again. Fox tells the group that they will be able to cross as long as they work together. He notices that the cars in the nearest lane are barely moving, so he suggests 
that they move to the grassy area in the middle while they have the chance. Despite a few close calls and some foolish behaviour from Weasel, all of the animals make it to the middle, with the exception of Adder, who seems to have disappeared. Fox quickly realises that they can't stay in the middle area for long due to the fumes from the cars. Whistler carries some of the smaller animals across, but can't carry the hedgehogs as they are thorny. I always thought this was a bit sketchy. Couldn't he have at least tried? The faster animals run across without too much trouble, while the slower ones wait for a long gap in the traffic. They all make it across except for the hedgehogs, who become too frightened. The female tries to make her husband move, but he simply curls up. And, in what is by far the saddest moment of the first series, they are both run over by a lorry. Al finds Ada back on the far side of the road, and Whistler carries her across, much to her disgust. With everyone else safely across the road, the animals continue their journey. The eleventh episode, A Deathly Calm, is probably the darkest episode of the series. The animals are walking through a field of cabbages. Some of the animals want to stop to eat, but Fox tells them not to because he doesn't like the smell. Al discovers that the farmer has poisoned all of the crops and fruit he's growing, and that anything they eat will kill them. Since they can't eat anything on the farm, Fox, Vixen, Whistler and Owl head for a nearby town to get food. While in town, Fox and Vixen become separated when a group of dogs chase them. Vixen returns to the group, but Fox does not. The following morning, a tractor begins spraying poison on the crops around them. Fox arrives and tells them they must go back the way they came. Rabbit is sprayed, but somehow, I don't quite know how, he doesn't die. Fox tells them that to get to White Deer Park, they will have to go through the town they were in the night before. The penultimate episode of Series 1, Pandemonium, is in my opinion the weakest of the series. The animals enter the town and take shelter from a rainstorm in a church by going through a hole in the wall. But in the morning, a bricklayer fills up the hole, trapping the animals. This is another part I thought was a little sketchy. Couldn't they have just pushed the bricks out of the way? The cement would still have been wet, after all. Fox tells them to wait for the main doors to open. Shortly after they do, a wedding enters. But when the music starts up, the animals begin to panic and start running all over the place. There is a lot of silly stuff in here that I really didn't care for, but long story short, all the animals escape and become scattered across the town. Fox, Vixen, Toad, Mole, Owl, Kestrel, Whistler and the Hares all make it out of the town together, but the rest are all missing. In the final episode of Series 1, so near and yet so far, Whistler flies over the town to see if he can find anyone. Badger and Weasel hide in a pub cellar, and Weasel becomes drunk off a leaking wine tap. I'm not sure if this could really happen, but I'll let it slide. Later some humans lay a plank down into the cellar, and they are able to escape. Al finds them thanks to Weasel singing loudly and Kestrel finds the squirrels at the top of a telegraph pole. The smaller animals and Adder make their way across a golf course. Adder saves them from a lawnmower, and Kestrel leads them back to the group. Whistler finds the rabbits in a trench in a building site, but can't move them out as they are too heavy for him. He goes to get Fox, and he carries them out and back to the group. The voles reflect on the journey they have done together, and vow that the oath live on, along with the story of the journey. With the group reunited, they continue on, and soon after arrive at White Deer Park. Toad enters first as he has guided them there. Fox expresses regret that they didn't all make it, and the stag tells them that they have made history. Now that I've covered the plot of the first series, I'm going to talk more subjectively about each of the characters. Fox. To be honest, I didn't really like Fox's character at first. He came across as a little bland and uninterested in what was going on. However, his character greatly improved over later episodes. Fox is a real hero who cares for the well-being of every animal making the journey. It's actually kind of odd how reluctant he is to be leader at the start, when he clearly is the only one good enough to lead. The great teamwork theme of the series centres around Fox and his ordering of the animals. Badger Badger is a similar character to Fox in the sense that he has concern for all the animals. However, he's probably not as brave as Fox, and less sure about what to do in a crisis. He seems to feel far more remorse after the death of the baby field mice than Fox ever does for any of the other deaths. Yet he still overcomes the loss of Fox fairly well. The bond between Fox and Badger at first seems like that of brothers, but after a while it seems more like a father-son relationship, with Badger looking up to Fox and staying loyal to everything he does, and even after he disappears, wanting to do what Fox would want him to do. Mole. Mole was one of my favourite characters when I watched the show as a kid. I think this was because he was a lot like me. Not much self-confidence, shy, and always wanting someone, mostly Badger, to look after him. 
In fact, Badger literally carries him for most of the journey. But at the same time, Mole has a great desire to do what he can do to help. There's one point when he starts to feel guilty about the fact he can ride on Badger while the other animals have to walk, and another when he becomes upset that he can't dig through solid wood. He also develops a fairly strong bond with Toad during the first series, and a fatherly bond with Badger, Adder. Watching the show as an adult, Adder is by far my favourite character. This is probably because she's the most complex. At first she comes across as a standard sinister snake that just likes to scare everyone. But in fact, Adder is a fairly decent person, or snake, deep down. There are numerous times when Adder saves the lives of many of the smaller animals. There are numerous times when Adder saves the lives of many of the smaller animals, and another when she saves Vixen's life, someone at the time she didn't even know. But on top of that, Adder likes to create the impression that she's nothing more than a sinister snake, only with the intent to kill. She saves other animals by frightening them and making them run, and she flat out denies ever saving Vixen and says that she will never live it down. I think the most interesting moment is when Pheasant comes back to the farm for her and Adder whispers, Never mind me, don't let the farmer see you. And then she says, Oops, as she realises that she is showing concern for another animal, which is the complete opposite impression she's trying to give. Adder clearly, above all, wants everyone to be scared of her. Owl. She fits the role of the Merlin figure throughout the first series, but is also a rather self-centred character, and she mentions a couple of times during the first series that she feels she should be leader. She got on my nerves a little because of this. I always thought she wasn't as clever as she seemed to think she was. Owl clearly is no fool, though. She saves the group on at least two occasions, simply by thinking about a solution to their problem. For the most part, Owl is more of a tool in the first series. She is there simply to be the brains of the group. But it's better explored in the later series. Kestrel. While Owl may have been used mostly as a tool in the first series, Kestrel is nothing but that in the first series. She merely acts as the group's scout and lookout during the journey, with her trademark cry of Gee! Gee! and really doesn't do anything else in the first series. To be fair, she does become more of a character in the second series. Weasel. <sighs> and now we come to by far the worst character on the show. Where do I even begin? She is annoying as hell with her stupid high-pitched laugh that she does at least once in every episode. She's selfish, mean-spirited, and probably the stupidest animal in the group. She's clearly been inserted in as the comic relief, which oddly enough is completely different from the role of the character of Weasel in the book. But nothing that Weasel says is in any way funny. She also makes a lot of rather insensitive and selfish remarks about the other animals. For example, right after the incident on the river, Weasel remarks that Fox has drowned, probably, and then does her stupid laugh. She's laughing about the possible death of their leader. Real classy. Now, to be fair, Weasel does do things to help the group during the journey, although nothing major. And the show is clearly aware of how annoying Weasel is, as many of the characters tell her to shut up throughout the series. But really, I just wanted someone to smack her in the face. She improves a little in the later series, but only a little. Toad. Toad is probably the most likeable character on the show. He seems to be friends with just about all the other animals, calling everyone matey. His self-confidence takes a bit of a drop during the series, and he clearly takes great value in what others think of him. It struck me that Toad must have been feeling a lot of pressure leading them to White Deer Park, because if he takes a wrong turn or misremembers something, they are pretty much screwed. And while he did deal with this pressure quite well, he never seemed like the most confident of guides. The Hares There were only two Hares in the first series, and neither of them were particularly nice. The female accuses Fox of being selfish for not allowing the animals to go back because of the fox hunt, and the male flat out disregards the safety of the other animals when they go missing. Both of them do have their better moments, though. The female feels guilty after Pheasant's death, and the male quite rightly points out the problem in the first episode of them travelling to White Deer Park together. The Rabbits The Rabbits are another group of comic relief characters. The male is a total wimp, and the female has a catchphrase of don't panic, when in fact that's all she ever does. They have two babies, one of which dies near the end of the first series. Not quite sure why they did that. It's not like the babies ever did anything. 
These characters seem to get the most abuse from the writers, always being humiliated or causing problems. I did like the voice of the female, though. The Squirrels. Fairly normal additional characters that just do the odd thing here and there to help out, such as warn Badger when Adder was going to eat one of the field mice. The Smaller Animals. For such vulnerable creatures, it's impressive that only the baby field mice die during the first series. It's also impressive how they stand up for themselves. Vole seems to be the unofficial leader of the group, and definitely isn't afraid to speak his mind. There's also a recurring gag where the Vole's mother has trouble hearing, which is also kind of funny. The Hedgehogs. There is no doubt that their ultimate death on the motorway is the saddest moment of the first series, but prior to that, they really didn't do much other than serve as additional members of the group. So I guess you could say their purpose was simply to die. We do get a decent amount of development of them in the episode where they die, and a real feeling that they love each other. The Pheasants. For characters that don't make it through five episodes, they were actually very well developed. It established that Pheasant is a self-centred and lazy bird who takes his wife for granted. His wife, meanwhile, is desperate for her husband's approval. After his wife is killed, however, we get something of a change in Pheasant. He realises how much his wife has done for him, in spite of him being rather ungrateful. He bravely volunteers to go back for Adder when no one else wants to as it will give him the chance to properly say goodbye to his wife. When I first saw this, I thought this was very interesting. Is the loss of his wife going to end up being a blessing in disguise? Will it change Pheasant for the better? But of course, as it turns out, no, he just gets shot by the farmer as well. So ultimately, I think the writers missed a trick with Pheasant. The Newts. Not much you can say about them since they were only in three episodes. They clearly were put in there to be a family to die early on, so that you knew that this show wasn't scared to kill anyone off. One thing I did like, however, was that their death was left a little ambiguous. It's implied that they die, but never confirmed. Vixen. You could almost call her the First Lady. She fills the role of standing by Fox's side and supporting him no matter what. And considering she's sort of married into the group of animals, that's pretty noble of her. Clearly she loves Fox. Love comes into play much more in the later series, but in this first series it's shown quite well through this character, Whistler. He joins the animals fairly late in the series, so there isn't much I can say about him as far as the first series is concerned. He helps out greatly in the motorway crossing and rescuing some of the rabbits, but that's about it. Now that I've talked about the characters, I'd like to talk about some of the bad aspects of the first series. I've already mentioned that I thought the episode Pandemonium was the weakest of the first series. With it taking place in a town, it felt a bit out of place, and the whole sequence where they are running around during the wedding was just a bit silly, and really felt like something out of a kid's show. Yeah, I know that technically this is a kid's show, but when everything else is just so much more mature, it just came across as a real letdown to have something like this. I've also already talked about the character Weasel. She really felt to me like something that was just thrown in there so that you could be sure it was a kid's show, and so that the parents didn't complain. Other than that, it's mostly minor things. Fox knows what a motorway is, not sure where he picked up that. There's also a point right after Fox has disappeared on the river, where Mole is messing around and laughing in the river, but in the next scene, he's mourning the loss of Fox and asking how anyone can be cheerful. Kind of an odd mood swing. Like I said before, the pheasants could have been better used, and I really don't get why they had one of the baby rabbits die. There's also a moment where Whistler saves Toad from a carp, and then tells them that he's been trying to catch that carp for years. You mind if I ask why? And how convenient it is that after all this time of him trying to catch the carp, he finally caught it when it was going to eat Toad. The animation also isn't great at times. There are a lot of copy and paste jobs, like whenever Weasel does her stupid laugh, it's so obviously always the same frames of animation. It's the same with the close-ups of Owl and the shots of animals running. Conclusion. It's hard to compare this series to the other two, since it's so radically different from the other two. The other two mainly take place in White Deer Park, have multiple story arcs, subplots, and also villains. The first series is by far the most straightforward, mainly because it's only based on one book. Just the journey to White Deer Park, with only one slight subplot when Fox briefly becomes separated from the group. But as an introduction to the characters, and the idea of the show, where humans barely appear, it does its job perfectly. It has dark turns, but not too many. 
good dialogue which doesn't talk down to kids, and I also felt that the deaths were really well done, with just the right amount of remorse before moving on. While it isn't my favourite of the three series, Series 1 is definitely worth seeing again. Join me for the next part, where I will talk about my favourite series of the three, Series 2.